So the basic idea is that every problem actually contains the seed of its own solution. Every problem contains the seed of its own solution. We're going to see that again and again and again and again. And I want to give some examples of that. So it's not just some weird, heady, spiritual thing and you're we're going to leave here thinking, what was that guy talking about anyway? I'm going to give some concrete examples. Okay? I was teaching a workshop in the UK years ago. And uh, this woman volunteered to work. She came into the middle. And I said, what do you want to work on? And she said, I want to work on the incest that my grandfather perpetrated on me from the time I was four years old until I was a teenager. And I thought, ooh, that's kind of a big thing for somebody to say. She had never, she didn't know any of those people, and she didn't know me. And I thought that's kind of a heavy thing. And I said, wow, that's a, that's a big thing. Have you ever worked on this before? And she said, yes, I've gone to therapists for many years, but it, it never worked. I, just talking about it never helped. So, uh, so I said, so how would you like to work on it that would be different than just talking about it? And in that moment, I looked over at her, and it was like she wasn't there. They call that dissociation, right? You know all about that, right? Yeah. Suddenly, she wasn't there. She had that far off, glazed look in her eye that is so common. And so, of course, I did what anybody would do. I said, I tried to contact her, right? I tried to talk to her. The more I talked to her, the more far away she got. I tried to do different techniques that would help her with her dissociation, and nothing happened. Then I remembered that she said that talking didn't help. So I thought, what the hell am I going to do? Here I am in a foreign country. Does my liability insurance apply over here? <laughs> what are these people going to think? Am I gonna, what am I going to be able to? And then I, f I remembered. I woke up as if from my own trance, and I remembered I'm a process worker. And I remembered, oh, there's something happening. I wonder what's actually happening. And then I started to notice what was actually happening. And I noticed that she was standing there not just unable to speak, not just with a far off look in her eye, but she was very slowly rocking side to side. And I thought, ah, oh, something's happening. So I said, so I said to her, wow, you're rocking side to side. And as I said that, the rocking got a little bit bigger. And I thought, thank God, that's contact. Right? When you say something and somebody actually does something differently, that means that there's some kind of contact there. Right? So I said, rocking, wow, you're really rocking side to side. So she started to do that more. I said, just follow that and do that however, do whatever is happening. She started to go even more. I said, whoa, yes, follow that movement. She started to do that. Now, if you're noticing, my arms are also moving a little bit. That wasn't happening before. I said, oh, arms moving. When that happened, she started moving her arms more. 
I'm going to not go through the whole thing. It took a long time. But after a while, she started to go like this. So I thought, I thought oh, there's something happening. I, my hypothesis was she's trying to hit away her grandfather. Right? So this is part, process work is partly the scientific method. You see what's happening. The scientific method is you notice phenomenon, you make a hypothesis about it, and then you make an experiment to see if that hypothesis is correct. Right? So I, so my, I, I noticed this happening. I, the hypothesis was she's hitting away her grandfather. So I put my hand up in the path of her hand to see if she would hit me. I thought that would be great. She's going to learn to fight against her grandfather. When, when I did that, she went like that. She went right over my hand. So I thought, maybe I didn't put my hand in the right place. I put my hand. She did it again. She went right over my hand. Even though my hand was right in her path, she went right over it like that. Another hypothesis bites the dust. So I thought, OK, so what else is going on? So this time, instead of doing that, I helped her. I, when, when her hand went by, I supported it like that. And then she started to go like that. And then she said, she said, I'm throwing salt. No, no. She said, she said, I'm throwing something over my shoulder. I thought, oh my gosh, she's talking. I said, you're throwing something over your shoulder. What are you throwing over your shoulder? She did it a few more times. She said, I'm throwing a salt shaker over my shoulder. And I said, wow. Why would somebody throw a salt shaker over their shoulder? And she said, she said well, people throw a salt shaker over their shoulder when, they, when something bad happened and they don't want it to happen again. And I thought, I thought, wow, in the United States, people just throw salt. But maybe in the UK, they throw salt shakers. I don't, I don't know, right? So, so, so I went, I, I said, give me a second. I went to the kitchen of the seminar house. And I said, I, and I got a salt shaker. And I gave it to her. And I said, here you are. And she threw the salt shaker over her shoulder. And she said, I'm done with it now. She was wide awake, Absol no trance anymore, no dissociation. She, she threw it over her shoulder, and she said, I'm done with it now. I said, really? She said, yes, I'm done with it. And then I said, excuse me, I'm so sorry to bug you, but in the United States, we throw salt over our shoulder, not salt shaker. Why do you throw? And she said, and she start she said, wow. She said, that's true. She said, here too, we throw salt over our shoulder, not salt shaker. So I said, so why did you throw a salt shaker over your shoulder? And she started to laugh. She said, a salt shaker, a salt shaker. I threw an assault shaker over my shoulder. She said, I didn't realize that. I threw the assault shaker over my shoulder. She said, I'm done. I kept in touch with her. She came to my seminars for years afterwards. And she told me that she was really done. Oh, I forgot to say a really important thing. At the very beginning of the work, I noticed her earrings. She had earrings that were little witch earrings. They were the cutest things in the world. They were, they were joined. There, there, there were two parts of the earrings joined at the hip. And, the, and at the bottom part were legs with a, with, a, with a broomstick. And when she moved, the legs and the broomstick would move. They were so cute. I wish I had a pair of them, even though I don't wear earrings. They were so cute. And I asked her about it at the beginning. And she said, oh, those are my witchy earrings. And then at the end, after she said she threw the assault shaker over her shoulder, she said, now that's magic. She said, that's magic. And then, years later, she told me that she started to be a witch, actually. She joined, she joined 
a Wiccan community and started to learn about the nature side of her personality. And she said she was done with the assault. Now, what the? What happened there? We followed what was happening instead of thinking of it as a problem. Yes, dissociation is a big problem, but it was also leading her in a direction of something happening.